If you have breast implants and you need to have them removed, but you don't have the money sitting around to remove them, but you do have insurance, you need to watch this video. So I was told in the Facebook groups and talking to just different ladies that I know that insurance is not going to cover breast implant removal. And sometimes that might be true, but other times it's not. And so if you do have insurance, especially in the United States, I'm not sure exactly other countries and, and, and insurance policies, but especially here in the United States, and even if you are in a different country, maybe watch this so that you can take some of the tips that I give you and the diagnosis codes that I give you and see if you can utilize that information to do your own due diligence with your insurance policy wherever you're at in the world. In this video, I want to share with you guys basically a couple great ideas that I ended up kind of understanding as I was going through this process. So if you do have insurance, most insurance policies have some kind of clause in there for implant removal. Now, every insurance is different. And so you have to do your due diligence of getting into your benefits, seeing exactly what your plan will cover. If you don't know how to do that, all you have to do, call the number on the back of your card and ask them like for the benefits department and then see if they can email you the section that talks about breast implant removal. Once you get that section of benefits, you need to thoroughly review all the benefits that they cover. Each plan, like I said, might have a little bit of a different type of things that they cover, but usually somewhere in that benefits section, you can find something that you do have going on that is covered and all you have to do at that point is go to your doctor and the breast reconstructive surgeon and report to them what you're having going on that correlates to what the policy does cover. And then that doctor that does take insurance can submit to your insurance company for prior authorization, the codes that align with what they cover and the proof from your medical records and you can get coverage. So I am gonna share with you all my uh, exact diagnosis codes and the codes that were covered. I um, had a bit of a situation where um, I ended up getting my explant slash breast implant removal covered twice. Um, I didn't have the surgery twice, but I ended up having to switch doctors after I had worked so hard to get it approved. Um, I went to this one doctor's office. It was a little bit of a mess and there was some chaos involved, um, but I ended up getting everything approved. I ended up getting breast implant removal, um, a lift and fat grafting approved. So I will give you the codes for all that here in a minute. Um, but then things didn't work out with that doctor's office and I ended up having to switch, which was a little bit stressful, but um, it worked out in my favor, of course. And so she used a few different codes than the original um, approval that I got. So it had to be re-approved, which was a little scary because I was worried, but it ended up getting approved. So point being, I managed to get my implant removal approved twice. And so there's hope for you if you have insurance. What you need to understand is a couple things. A, you're gonna have to make sure first and foremost that you find a breast reconstructive surgeon in your area or somewhere close enough to you that you can go to because those are the type of surgeons that will take insurance. So usually they have to be affiliated with a hospital or they have to be affiliated with something like like if you're trying to figure out how to find someone in your area, just Google like breast cancer centers and you, you can call them and see who they're using for their breast reconstructive surgeries. Um, sometimes you can go directly to those centers. Like I ended up going to a university that had an oncology department that had plastic surgeons within the oncology department. And since it's in a hospital and a hospital type of setting, they take insurance. So you do have to do a little legwork on finding a doctor that does take insurance. So that means usually, you know, if you heard some popular surgeon in your area, they're probably not going to take insurance. And what will happen is if you go to them and they don't take insurance, you could attempt 
to try to get coverage after the surgery and like prove it was medically necessary, it's a harder route to take. And here's something you need to consider as well. That will be an out of network doctor. And so they're gonna cover, I think when I called my insurance company, it was like only 60% versus 90%. So I was still gonna have quite a bit out of pocket it, and I was gonna have the risk of it not actually working. So I wasn't, I wasn't willing to take that risk. And so I set my mind on finding a surgeon that took insurance, that specialized in like breast reconstruction, especially after having breast cancer, because you know those type of surgeons are already very familiar with trying to make your breasts look as good as possible for what you're working with after massive breast surgeries where they're removing you know, pretty much everything. So you can rest assured a lot of times with those surgeons, the results are gonna turn out a little better and they're gonna be um, a little safer because those surgeons are really thinking about blood supply and just maintaining the health of your breast. Okay, so once you find a doctor's office that does take insurance and will take your insurance, and you've looked at your policy to see what they do cover, I would suggest actually printing it off and taking it with you to the breast reconstructive office, but make sure you're familiar with it before you go so that you can really look at that list of what they will accept as ex medically necessary to have a breast implant removal. A lot of the policies are for breast pain that is causing you to not be able to do your daily tasks like brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, showering, interfering just with your daily living. Most of the ladies that have breast implant illness do have a lot of pain and they're probably having trouble actually doing their daily task. And so you're not gonna go into your um, appointment saying, hey, I've got breast implant illness, I want you to um, make a claim with my insurance to have my breast implants removed because I have breast implant illness. That's not gonna work since the policies currently are not covering breast implant illness. Hopefully they will one day, that would just make the process a lot easier, but right now they're not. So let's focus on right now, and right now is the end of 2022. Um, and so as of right now, you need to focus on what they do cover. One of the main things, like I said, is pain that is limiting your ability to do your daily tasks. So you will go to your breast reconstructive surgeon appointment. You will let them know that you are having really bad breast pain that is really affecting your day-to-day -day task and you want to see about getting them removed. They will document that. That's what you need. Aside from that, like say, like for me, I actually was, um, I had the breast implants that caused cancer I had had symptoms on and off and it was very worrisome. I was having to get mammograms every six months. Um, well, I was instructed to get them every six months. Now looking back, I would not recommend that. I would just get a breast MRI. Um, but if you have any questions on that, just leave a comment. I had a lot of other stuff going on. I had massive health problems because of my breast implants. but. Guess what? Insurance does not care about that. They didn't even care that I was symptomatic for BIA ALCL uh, because I didn't have enough fluid to have it tested to give me a clear diagnosis. Now my insurance policy would have covered it if I would have tested positive with um, the fluid testing for BIA ALCL, but since I didn't have enough fluid for testing to get that confirmed, that kind of was out of the window for right now. They didn't even care, but I still managed to get it covered. And so that's what I want you to understand is you just have to look at what your policy will cover and really focus on those things and not go off on a you know crazy path of trying to get it covered for breast implant illness or something that they don't cover because they won't cover it. I wanna go ahead and give you the diagnosis codes that I originally had for the first surgery that I got approved. But there was three things and it was capsular contracture, mastodemia, and breast implant status. The codes for those, so get a pen and write this down, was T85 
dot four four x a, and that's for capsular contracture. The second one was mastodenia, and the code for that was n six four dot four. And then the last one that just said breast implant status was z nine eight dot eight two. I think that my surgeon used all of these or similar to these because I did give her these from my previous approval. Um, so yeah, but I, these codes did get me approved the first time. And then now I'm gonna read to you the CPT codes and I had three different ones and that is breast implant removal that code was 19328. The next one was for peri implant capsulectomy, breast complete, including removal of all intra intracapsular contents. That code was 19371. And then the last code was mastopexy, and that was 19316. And I also want to share with you all that on the original surgery, uh, on the first surgery that I did have approved but didn't go and have it done, um, they also included fat grafting and they were gonna cover that. Fat grafting codes and it was 15771, 15772. And they were willing to cover that because basically when the surgeon the breast reconstructive surgeon puts in that they're going to be removing a lot of tissue for like the capsulectomy and the breast implant removal that sometimes they have to transfer fat from a different area so that they don't leave you looking deformed so you can potentially have your breast implants removed and get fat grafting covered because of the breast reconstructive portion of the surgery now i want to share with you that the original surgery I got approved for, that lady was planning on doing it all at once. And when I ended up going to the surgeon that I went to and I discussed that with her and I was really excited about that because in my brain I was like, okay, if I can get fat grafting covered, then I'll probably come out looking even better. And plus then I can, you know, get some like fat grafted on my like lower stomach and all that good stuff. Well, she actually said, she does not recommend doing that at the same time that she finds it's a lot more dangerous. It puts your breast at risk for having loss of blood supply and that a lot of times it doesn't even take as well if you do it immediately at the same time as the other surgery. So keep that in mind. I, at first I was a little resistant to that. I was kind of like, well, A, I was irritated because I had been purposely trying to gain weight. Um, while I was waiting to get all the approval for the other surgery. And then when I go to this new surgeon, she's like, no, you need to wait at least six months. So then I was like, great, I gained all this weight for no reason. And well, I think I gained like maybe 10 pounds, but um, so I didn't like really, really have enough for fat grafting, but um, it's fine. But I'm actually like at this point, not even sure I would even get fat grafting because I don't want to go through any more surgery to be honest. and. I think I'll be fine without it. Now granted, if you end up having a massive deformity um, and need some fat grafting to fill in an area, like maybe something, you know, there was a lot of tissue taken out of one spot for like a mass or something, um, which I, I had to have um, some tish, extra tissue taking out for that reason. But my surgeon did such a great job that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, you know. So anyway, I'm gonna link a couple articles in the description that you can go to as a reference. One of those is an article that has a bunch of different insurance companies that has covered breast implant removal. And then one of them is that article I was talking about for my insurance that talks about breast implant removal not following a mastectomy. So that will be really helpful. If you have any questions, then please just leave a comment below. I want as many women to be able to get an explant if they want it or need it, which I recommend anyone doing it if you are in good enough health and you want to. Sorry if this video wasn't as seamless and smooth as I wanted it to be, but I wanted to get it up because I had so many people requesting for me to do that. So I just kind of like,
try to quickly grab all my information and make a video for you guys. But I'm gonna make another one if needed. If you all have questions, just ask. And if there are specific questions you have, I can always make a video on each specific question so that I could clarify it a little bit better. Because like I said, I do want anybody that wants to have a breast implant removal and that does have insurance, I want you to try. And with that being said, I also want you to understand that sometimes, a lot of times, insurance companies will try to deny you at least one time. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and do an appeal on that. And a lot of times that second time you can get it fixed or covered. Uh, I think on that first one, we had some issues. Well, I think the girl coded a couple things wrong and it took a couple months to get it approved, but we eventually got it approved. So, and like I said, I got breast implant removal, the caps, capsulectomy, um, a mastopexy, which is like a lift and uh, fat grafting covered. So there is hope. If you didn't think you had hope, you do. You just have to do your due diligence and you just have to be persistent and expect for your insurance company to cover it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I wanna help as many people as possible. And if you are interested in more about my story, I have a playlist where you can learn more about the issues I was having and how my explant surgery recovery went, which I'm still actually on. Um, but yeah, so if you're feeling my vibe, please subscribe. And if you like the video, give it a like and I'll see you guys next time.